I'm Jasmine Harmon, and my mum's been a compulsive hoarder all my life. This room is shameful. When I was growing up, I felt that she loved her stuff more than she loved me. Do you want some more bags? Last year, I tried to help clear the hoard from Mum's house. Jessie. I'm telling you, you're not keeping all of these angels Look, to your dolls. I'm trying to control myself. Thank you. And I'm telling you, I'm keeping those. If that isn't with your agreement, then we have to fall out. OK. I discovered little is known about why people hoard. I'm just looking for answers, and there aren't any out there. Yet there are people up and down the country living in appalling conditions amongst piles of clutter that they can't bear to part with. I have got a rat. Can this go? No. I don't want to sort rubbish into that size bag. I want to sort it into my oh, rat God, bag. God. Remember again, why do I have to get rid of all my towels? <laughs> Whilst helping my own mum get to grips with her situation, I've heard from some of Britain's biggest hoarders. Now I want to help them as well. I have Ooh, to pick my way very carefully. What's in there? That's our living room. After years of living with hoarding, you just want something normal. You just want to be the same as everybody else, because you're not. I want to find out if there are ways to help hoarders overcome this debilitating condition. April last year, it must be. Mm. Oh, God. I've been frightened of death for the first time in my life. Experts believe hoarding should be recognised as a distinct psychological disorder, but it's not. Families like mine are living with shame and secrecy, and we're not alone. Behind closed doors, up to three million people are suffering, and there are few places they can turn for help. In St Albans, Marion and Alan have lived with Alan's hoarding for over 30 years. Absolutely fabulous. Pretty woman. I don't want to remove too many because if this lot slides, the whole lot will go down. At the moment, there's not one room that we can use properly. Alan's possessions are in the kitchen, they completely fill the dining room. I haven't been in the living room for maybe two years since he blocked the doorway up. In their three-bedroom semi, there's only one place that Marion can actually sit down. Alan's hoard has reached epic proportions. It's taken over the entire backyard and the front garden too. Emotionally, I do value these things. I feel comfortable with them. They're not in the way. Alan's hoarding has taken its toll on the couple's 41-year marriage and on family life. They have three adult children who all grew up in the house. I felt he took a lot from, took a lot from the children, really. He did, because he took care of the stuff and he didn't necessarily take care of us. I had to do that. I don't want to be hit like this. Although I've lived with it for a long time with my mum, I've never been to another hoarded house before, so I don't really know what to expect. Hello. Hello. Come Hello, on. Jasmine. Really nice to meet you. Lovely to meet, meet you. you. Thank you for having right. me round. It's, it's not very easy to get in. Don't worry. <laughs> What's in there? That's our living room. It's not in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Whose are all these uh, old VHSs? They're all Allens. Have the you trouble ever is, them? well, the trouble is we can't get into the room where the video might be. So these are the two bedrooms. Next door yeah, and next here. Door. And then uh, there's a small one here which you can't even see. Oh. The door is there. You can't even see the door. <sighs> so you both sleep in that much bed? There. I'm afraid so. It's not much, is it? It's probably a half. Yeah. So 
at the bathroom. That's the bathroom. What about getting showered and things like that? Not at the moment. You can't get I go to, to the my shower. dad or a friend. So when's the last time you were able to use the shower? <sighs> a year ago. Really? On my own shower, yeah. Where does he get stuff from? Just walking around and finding mm. things. Skips are good. Charity shops. Anything anybody's thrown out mm. would come back here. Has he been like this ever since you've known him? It wasn't really showing itself until he got two redundancies. Right. One following on another. Mm. I think that's a trigger. It's like his possessions took the place of his family and his friends. Mm. And it makes you anxious. Which part of it make you anxious? If someone comes Which, to the door? Yes. Or? The embarrassment of it, I suppose. I've been you there. understand? I, I know do you understand. do, you do. I knew that you would. And that is just, that's amazing because for years you think you're the only one that it's happening to. You think nobody else lives like this, nobody else has to live like this. You'd be amazed how many people do. Despite their piles of possessions, many hoarders remain in denial. Hi, Hello, Alan. Jasmine. Nice to meet you. Alan, do you think that you have a problem with hoarding possessions? Hoarding it? Well, I know it looks higgledy-piggledy at the moment, but tidied up and put in its place. See, nothing is in its right place. No. It's just laying about. So you think it's just because there's not adequate storage? Exactly, yeah. So with the books, do you have any idea how many you've got? Oh, I could fill a bookshop. I look at these books as friends. Everyone's a friend. Alan is emotionally where my mum was about three years ago. Um, still very much in denial. So it would be amazing if Alan could start along that same road to acknowledging what's going on. I've got an electrical problem. Sorry. 64-year-old Richard lives in this four-storey townhouse in North London. Over the last 40 years, he's filled every inch with clutter. But unlike Alan, <sighs> Richard seems keen to get rid of some of his hoard. That is an almost in-date mushroom risotto, which I should have cooked by now. There is an incredible amount of rubbish. It's a total mess. It's filthy, dirty. All this clutter means that I can't carry on life in a normal way. Three of Richard's 12 rooms are completely inaccessible, and he can only just squeeze into his living room, bedroom, kitchen and bathroom. Oh, God. Oh, dear. Moving around the house has become a hazard as the floors are completely covered in layers of packaged food, plastic bags and general rubbish. Ah! And the house isn't helping Richard's already poor health. He's just spent nine days in hospital with a respiratory infection. It has overwhelmed me as my health has deteriorated over the last few years. I'm sort of getting near to the bottom Right now, I have actually gone into my doctor and said, I've been frightened of death for the first time in my life. I have got a rat, bugger. It's come to a situation now that outsiders won't come and help. And family connections are very, very limited. It's one of these things where the family didn't work very well. It's quite a secretive 
world that I'm stepping into. Richard hasn't let anybody in the house for a long time, so I'm guessing it's going to be quite bad. Hello, Hello Jasmine. Follow me and fight your way back through this chaos and clutter. <clears throat> all this plastic and paper on the stairs, I'm surprised you haven't tripped or slipped down, to be honest. I have Ooh, to pick my way very carefully. Yeah. So we've finally got to my bedroom, which is in utter chaos. There's no proper heating in it. But it must be freezing with a broken window. It's very uncomfortable because you get so cold. It's not good enough for my health. Picking my way through this last mountain of clutter gets me to our chaotic kitchen. Richard's asked me to find someone to help him clear his floors. But having met him, I think he'll need more than physical help. How do you think it's got to this stage? Just being unable to cope and with the back and leg injuries that are historic, I can't bend down and pick up off the floor for too long a period. But how do the things get on the floor in the first place? They fall. Right. Gravity. And when I say how has it got to this stage, I suppose I mean not things falling off, but how has it got to the stage that everything has to be balancing on top of things so that they do fall off? Partly because of the problems of the design of the house. It was designed 30-odd years ago. A modern house has far more places to put things. This is an awful, awful way for anybody to live. I know Richard's got health problems and back problems, but he's also a little bit in denial. And I think there's probably a lot more to it than Richard is letting on at the moment, and he may not even realise what's really going on under the surface. Hopefully, having someone here with him will make a real difference. It is oh. beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's cutie, pretty. Home sweet home. Last year, we managed to clear a few rooms in my mum's house, which was a huge step forward, but a real struggle, and most of the house remained unusable. Since then, mum's continued to have therapy for her hoarding, and now seems to be in a much better place emotionally. If I can see that there is a problem, therefore I want to deal with it, and I feel like I can deal with it, but I just can't deal with it on my own. My mum's one of very, very few hoarders who have a high level of awareness about what they're doing and about the problem and how it affects their life. And she also really wants to change. And this stuff... We've decided to take a radical step and tackle mum's entire hoard. Does need to be wrapped? where to start like do I do I actually take all the food stuff with me or just put all the pictures yep. together love everyone's everywhere and I'm kind of a bit panicky but I um, haven't started crying yet <laughs> the plan is to remove everything from the house to a big warehouse then mum can come and actually see what she's got and get rid of things Everything out, we have a fresh canvas. That would make me happy. For the first time in 25 years, Mum's house is completely clear. I'm quite upset, actually. I just feel bereft. I do. It's quite difficult, and I, I know I'm putting on a brave face, but actually it's hurting um, to have let go of everything to the warehouse. That's a great one, thank you. The pile in the middle is getting smaller, isn't it? Yeah. We've taken all of Mum's hoard to a local warehouse. 
Mum's asked for everything to be spread out and sorted into categories to make it easier for her to decide what to discard. But I'm concerned that seeing the contents of the whole house displayed like this might overwhelm her. Hi, Mum. Hello. <laughs> You're right. Mm. Wow. <laughs> what do you think? It's all rather lumped up, isn't it? It's not like even. <laughs> This is the only thing that's spread out. I know, but I mean, I don't know how we can right, spread well, it all out. I could out. choose the shoes now and then get rid of the rest. Yeah, go on then. <sighs> Just having a hard time. Sorry. <laughs> These all your stuff. It's in the warehouse. You can choose what you're going to take. Don't take too much. <laughs> I knew it would be difficult, I just didn't know when the difficulty would arise and it's arisen now. Right. <laughs> it's still very, very difficult for her because it's yeah. a very emotional process. And so that's why we have to go at her pace, we have to do it in a way that she's comfortable with. For the last nine months, Mum's been opening up about her childhood in Cyprus with psychologist Felix Ekonomakis. So, Vasula, would it be OK today to do a little bit of work on uh, the, the, the loss of your father? Yeah. The loss of any parent is, is obviously a, a significant thing. It's a big deal. And because there is a theme of loss implicated with hoarding, then this is really an area that we need to look at. When Mum was four years old, her father, my grandfather, was murdered during a period of political unrest in Cyprus. My mum and the rest of her family were forced to emigrate, leaving their whole lives behind. Even though it's a long time ago, it's still possible that there are unprocessed feelings about it. So when you think of the loss of your father, what comes up for you? It's a lack of security, lack of comfort, right. deprivation of love. Mm. It's a lack of anything, everything. You know, we carry a father and mother and everybody else inside of us. It's the part we carry inside. We internalise them. Mm. Felix asks Mum to imagine her father is in one hand, able to have a conversation with herself in the other. What would father say to that part? That would be a nice thing to sort of to say and to know. If, for example, I was talking to my daughter, I would say, I'm incredibly proud of you. You're, you're a lovely woman. I think I'll keep it in my head. OK. How does that part feel to hear that and take that on board now? Yeah. Feels nice. It feels nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Releasing first is natural. The reason she likes to surround herself with a lot of possessions is because she's trying to fill a void. I just hope that she's ready to move on from the feeling of comfort and security that she gets from having all the belongings around her. I don't want this process of clearing out the house to end up being another loss. Oh, you crunched all that wood now. What wood? Oh. Do it to annoy you. Oh, smashed all that down. 
In St Albans, Alan's hoard no longer fits into his house and his back and front gardens are piled high with clutter. The garden's such an eyesore that four months ago, the local council took legal action, requiring Marion and Alan to clear the garden or risk prosecution. They now have two weeks until their deadline. I'm feeling anxious because when you don't know what's going to happen, it's, you know, you worry. And if Alan doesn't cooperate, where do we go? He's got to change something, because it's, it's got to be done. Today, I've asked Alan to try and make a start clearing his garden. I want to see whether everything means something to him, or whether he can let some things go. I know that from working with my mum and working through her possessions, initially it's very, very difficult and you have to take it slowly. I think that the key to working with Alan is going to be letting him make the decisions. Should we have a look through them? Keep them. You want to keep them all? Yeah, all the magazines. Can we throw the wet books? But you need to look at the books first. Right, OK. Do you want these? Yeah. For moving the fridge? Logically... Move anything. Oh, them. anything. Logically, when are we going to be moving anything? Oh, for God's sake. No, don't go, don't go. I'll, put, I'll, put, I'll find somewhere for them inside if you really want to have them. Put them under the bed, then. Can that go? No. Right. You, haven't got, you already had lots of paper. No. Paper's here, there's paper's there. That's the pile of stuff you said can go? Yeah, I can see that uh, most of that we don't really want anymore. That's good. <laughs> no, no, if I'd have had more time, I might have uh, decided differently. After a full day's work, Alan's only managed to clear a tiny area of the garden. Having seen how difficult it is for Alan to part with any of his hoard, I'm worried that at this rate, they won't get it cleared on time. Hi, Alan. My big worry, Alan, is that I don't know how you're going to be able to prioritise pleasing the council and keeping the stuff that you want to keep. See, I've never looked on it as a problem. It's other people's problem. I was always taught you don't interfere with other people, so... But there's the risk of getting prosecuted or, you know, the risk of a fine. I mean, are you worried at all about the Well, it's council? no good worrying. It's no good worrying about it. Alan may not be worried, but I know that Marion is. How easy do you find it to talk to Alan about this problem? Not very easy at all. The trouble is that I, I've spent a lot of time doing, not doing anything, mm. not trying to change it, because I know it's going to make Alan angry. Mm. What is it then that pushes his buttons or gets him angry? Anybody taking, moving, um, or even, even sort of threatening to move things. Mm. How are you feeling about the council situation. I try not to let myself think about it because it's, I don't know how to cope with it. If, if I allow myself really to think how enormous it is, I fall apart. Yeah. And I'm no good to anybody falling apart. No, you're not. I'm not. I just don't know how it's possible to get through to him that what he's doing is hurting himself and hurting Marion. At Richard's, there's also a huge hoard to tackle. As so often, chaos comes before order. He's told me he wants his cluttered floors cleared, 
But like Alan, I think he's going to find it very hard to part with any of his possessions. So I'm treading carefully. With all the things like the plastic bottles and the food packaging and stuff like that, is that rubbish or is that something that you need vast to...? vast majority of this stuff that's now down on the floor is rubbish. OK. I've yet to work out what's really going on for Richard, but making his house safer to move around seems like a good place to start. I've asked Heather Matuotso, a professional declutterer with extensive experience working with hoarders, to help me. Hi. Hi. You must be Heather. I am, yes. Greetings. Nice to see you. There's an awful lot that I need to get out of here. It's impossible to know how Richard will react when the actual clearing starts and I think that's what today's all about to be able to gauge a little bit on what he says compared to what he's actually ready to do. I know you're quite used to working in this kind of environment. Is this daunting for you or...? No, not really. It's a big house mm. and there's a lot, a lot of stuff. But I think the main thing is to find out what he really wants to keep. And it's really important that they feel mm. as though they're in charge because it's their stuff and it's their house and it's their decisions. There's so much food everywhere. What is this? April last year, it must be. It's awful. This is just what makes it smell so bad in here. These... It's really dangerous because there's a lot of out-of-date food and paper and there's plastic bags all up and down the stairs. It's a wonder that he hasn't fallen down these stairs and broken his neck. Heather and I start to make progress, but we soon hit a problem. What's happened is that I've found one or two things which they've thrown out, but when you actually check it out, you find there are one or two important things. Ooh. Right, I've brought a few things up that you wanted to keep, mm. um, but I'd just like to ask you why you wanted to keep the stuff, if you can. Let, let me just, sort of, for example, the stuff that's a bit mouldy, like this. Which... Oh, I, I just say it saves the jars. Right. <laughs> OK. And this is just in date, but still really... And there's another tin that really is... I think, it, I think they're dangerous, Richard. I know you like kidney beans. <sighs> I mean, this... Tin of kidney beans looks grotty, but in actual fact, the bottom of the can is perfectly all right. They look dangerous, that's my point. That's why I threw them away. Yes, but I think that's got to be my decision as to whether I'm going to throw away money that I've spent on food. Obviously, if it's deteriorated inside, then out it goes. But you can't see botulism or smell it or detect it, and that's what you get from rusty tins. I once, at my late mother's house, opened a can of steak that was 20 years old, and oh. it was perfect. I, I, I threw them away because I just thought they... Sorry. I feel this... this particular point of the discussion is absolutely irrelevant and I don't want to be discussing tins of beans. Heather's agreed to help me with Richard for the next 10 days, but he's made it clear things have to be done on his terms. I think that my greatest concern is I've got to be able to say yay or nay to what goes out of the door. It's having a pair of hands who can help me not a pair of hands that wants to do what it wants to do. He's really at odds with himself. On one side, he's desperate to not live like this. And on the other side, he can't help himself. He cannot just say, fine, get rid of it all. He has to check everything. And that's not his fault. That is part of this illness. Mm. 
Marion and Alan have just one week left to clear the hoard in their garden, and they're at a standstill. They're unable to even discuss the situation, but today I want them to try. Because they have no room in their own home, we're meeting at their daughter Lucy's house. What I'm hoping is that they will all have an opportunity to share how they're feeling in a way that's constructive, that's not judgmental, and maybe in seeing how much Marion is hurting, it might have some impact on how quickly Alan can progress with the garden. I think my dad finds it really hard to see how difficult he's made it for the rest of the family. I've got two young boys, one's nearly eight and one's five, but I can't take them over to mum and dad's house because there's just no space for them. That makes me feel quite sad, really. We've never, as a family, been able to sit down and talk objectively about the problem. Any attempts have been um, just met with anger and, um, you know, or silence. We know that it's, you know, this isn't about criticism or blame or... I've asked psychologist Dr Caroline Wells, who's trained in treating hoarders and family therapy, to facilitate the meeting. In mind also to perhaps, I don't know, leave any, you know, defensiveness at the door as well. They want to clear. I want to retain it. Because I've got a use for it. Maybe, Marion, if you could tell us a little bit about your experience. We can't live the way we, we've been living. And the things I want are not unreasonable things. I would really like my grandsons to come over and, mm. and be able to play in the garden because if you leave it too long, there'll be teenagers who won't be interested. They don't know what a great granddad you'd be. Mm. If you could let yourself. And I'm sure Lucy would like the boys to know you better. As well. I just worry that my mum's going to trip over down the really narrow path that she has to step over and she's going to fall and she's going to break her leg. You know, I worry about them in this house and in this garden that is dangerous and it's not going to get any better unless we, you know, it's just going to get worse. After years of living with Hordy, you just want something normal, something ordinary. Just want to be the same as everybody else because you're not. What's it like listening to Marion saying she just wants a bit of normality? I, I know. How I know. does that make you feel? <sighs> Selfish, I suppose. Would you say having the grandchildren over would be an advantage? Well, it'd be nice to have them come over and play, but... Listening to how much it would mean to Marion to have them yes, come over. Yes, yes, I know she would enjoy them coming over. Uh, well, we'll work towards that goal. Hi. When it comes to things and family, it's um, difficult to draw a line somewhere, but uh, I can't say that I feel more about objects than I do about the children or my wife. Right now, his intention is that he will be able to clear some stuff, he'll be able to avoid prosecution. Whether that can actually materialise or not, we don't know. The proof is in the pudding, isn't it? At Richard's house, we've now taken nearly 30 bags of rotting food, plastic bags, packaging and paper off his floors. But Richard has to painstakingly inspect every bag before letting us throw anything away. I'm deciding what is definitely rubbish. Good 
God, that's a pencil. Ooh. Richard is still very much at the stage of needing to check everything. This is his first time tackling the problem, and I do think that that's to be expected, really, and that's quite normal. Oh. Can you pass me back that tray so I can get rid of these papers here off the yeah. floor? Oh, bloody hell. Ah, you want us all rubbish into that size bag. I want to sort it into a red oh, bag. Oh, God, I forgot, yeah. He's finding it very hard to let go of things, but I think Richard and I know each other well enough now that I can set him a challenge, which is to mm. ask him if he can let go of some newspapers and not have to check them. Because once he knows what it feels like and it doesn't hurt or it's not frightening, then he'll be able to do that and work a lot quicker. OK, I've got a little box of newspapers for us to look through. Just as an experiment, I would really like to see if you can take all those papers and put them in the bag without well, looking through them. How would that make you feel? Um, Describe your sort of emotions. Just a little bit concerned. I just want to flick through it. Mm -hmm. It is time consuming, but the thing is, it works for me. I'm worried about time and given your health as well. I feel that this house could, without sounding overly dramatic, be the death of you. I definitely want to check them because I want to see what's going out of the door. Just suspend that thought for a minute. For no, I've made, I'm not going to suspend no, that. It's more important to you to check everything. Yeah, than at, the risk. At, the, at the moment it is. Then it's more important to check everything than mm. risk losing a little thing. Your health is not as important. Even if it shortens my life, for my peace of mind, I would rather go through it. Right now, he is backed into a corner. His health is suffering. He can't function properly at all, and he doesn't know what to do. But he doesn't really want to clear out at the moment. And he needs to have other people to help him. I've asked Professor Paul Salkowskis, one of Britain's few hoarding experts, to talk to Richard. Hello. Paul. Hi, I'm Jasmine. Hi, pleased to meet you. From my own experience with my mum, the first step towards getting better is actually admitting that you've got a problem. So, how do you see your problem? The house is a problem because I haven't got the physical strength to actually get on and sort it out. OK, but... I suppose that what's missing from that is how you feel about this lot. I'd like to get it sorted and the rubbish I'd like to get thrown out. Right. And still not quite get how you feel about it. How do you mean? I mean, we're sitting here in an icy cold house, surrounded by a lot of stuff, yeah. Most of which is not accessible to you. And, and I'm keen to understand what it's really like to be you. I'm also keen to understand a bit more about how you feel about yourself and about the situation you're in. I'm from sorry, I'm, I'm finding it very difficult to see where you're coming from. One of the possibilities I'm thinking about is that you really try and avoid thinking too much about how you feel. Which would bring us fairly neatly on to what has happened to you. Right, OK. Difficult childhood, um, slightly dysfunctional family. There was quite a lot of domestic 
upheaval, I would say. When Richard was 13, his father left the family and Richard's whole life was turned upside down overnight. It put a lot of stresses on me because I became the man of the house and, you know, it wasn't a good scene. And relationships with my father deteriorated quite seriously. So, pretty horrible all round. Not the most pleasant of times. Was money a bit tight at that time? Yes, it was extremely tight. My mother got heavily into debt, inevitably. So, does at least some of your ideas about the value of things come from that time? Yes, it does, probably does. Mm. Um, Because I had to be conscious and aware of what things cost. But in my childhood, my parents' divorce and things like that, you've got to move on. You no, can't no, no, live in the no, past. No, that's right. I know, but I actually think a lot of this is coming from turmoil that you've gone mm-hmm. through. And you're sinking into the quicksand of this stuff. But to the point the quality of your life is so poor. Mm. Well, you're asking me, where's my life worth living? I'm not asking you that. I'm asking you whether you might consider ending this phase of your life in order to enter one that is not dominated by these huge piles, piles of, of things. Clutter. Maybe they are just things, but they have been a part of my life, and I'm not this prepared is, this to is, have somebody come in see, from outside you see, and take a part, part of my life away. Do you away? see this as part of the problem? Because nobody would be taking part of your life away. Your life, these things have taken your life do away. You that, you know, it's the other way around. And I think it's appropriate that you have some further help with both areas, which I think I would are be quite happy to do so. OK. So how did it go with Richard? I would be pretty happy with that as a first session. He drew some clear links between some of the pretty awful life experiences he's had and his attachment to possessions. Mm. And he's not going to make, be able to make major changes until he's dealt with some of the issues that we pulled out today. And have you worked with people in the past who have overcome this kind of level of clutter problem? Yes. Yeah. No. 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 I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't write him off. I think we made some progress. I think he tended to be a little bit too oriented on what my past life was but the work that I'm doing with Heather is probably a lot more practical and useful but I think there is scope for some more discussion to help me. Richard will need ongoing treatment if he's to really get to the root of his hoarding. In the meantime we're going to continue trying to clear his floors and stairs. In St Albans, Alan and Marion have just one day left before the council deadline runs out and their garden could be inspected. Do we want all those hangers? Oh, we haven't done really have much just the wire. Hang on. You want the wire? I don't want to have to go and buy a load of wire. I don't want to have to go and buy anything when I've already got it. For the first time, Alan's allowing Marion and her friends to go through his things in an effort to meet the deadline. I feel really terrible, actually, if we can't get the garden finished today. It's really difficult because the more people there are, the less control Alan will feel like he's got, and that just might sent him a little bit over the edge. I mean, you had any thoughts about the China, where the China can go? I don't know yet, because it's happening so fast. Well, it's got to, Alan, because it's... You know, there's a day with everybody here. How are you? Stressed. What are you stressing about? No. Just you can't work with about 10 people, no. you know. Because you can't see what they're all doing, no. you Is this definitely for keeping? 
because there's a lot of paper. Can I chuck those? Stick them in there. Yeah. I'll, Thanks. Let, I'll let you. I'll Thanks. Let you. Just for today. What? Only for today? <laughs> this is your new life, Alan. Yeah. Under Alan's supervision, newspapers, wet books and broken bric-a-brac are all going in the skip. Is that books or...? Yeah, it looks like books. For a long time, Alan wouldn't let anybody else help because he didn't see it as helping at all. So it's amazing that Alan has allowed all these people to come in and he's doing it not only for necessity, but he's doing it for his family as well. Plastic can go. The plastic can go, but you want the wire one. Is that right? You want the wire no, one? No, that can go. Right, that, that can, can go, go as well. Right. Okay. Good. What about this old that. video? No, that can go. The video can go. Brilliant. Well done. Full tunes hey, well done. made and Brilliant. full tunes were lost. Yep, yep. Okay. Right, look, look, we nearly made it through to this table. That's fantastic. By the end of the day, three skips have been filled. The backyard's still full, but for the first time in five years, Marion and Alan have a clear front garden. Well, how we go then? Yay! Woo! That's great! <laughs> how does it make you feel having all that oh. space now? Wow. Well, a bit strange, probably. It's magic. Oh, oh really? Oh. Really? <laughs> <You made> wow. <laughs> You have done so well, Alan and Marion. It's made a vast difference, and thanks to everybody. And You're their welcome. Help. You're very welcome. Well, I'm grateful for what we've done and what help we were given, but it does sort of hurt to see things get thrown away in the skip. Alan and Marion have cleared enough to avoid prosecution for now. Their house is still stuffed with Alan's things, and most rooms are unusable, but Marion's optimistic. It started. Something really good has started, I believe. It's been a long time coming. And if Alan thinks it's magical, then maybe we can work some more magic. I'm just delighted. I, I really didn't think this could happen. Uh. Oh, this is nice. Oh, I'm so lucky to have so many things to choose from. Yeah, I'm going to keep it for now. Unlike Alan, Mum's had the benefit of years of therapy, but we're now halfway through her time in the warehouse and she's still struggling to let go of her hoard. I'm on the verge of a meltdown, to be honest, because I can't see how it's going to work. If everything here had to go back to the house, I would feel totally gutted. If there was no emotion involved, you know, it, it wouldn't hurt me to walk away from here and say, I don't need anything. But I can't handle that at the moment. I can't be like that. Remember again, why do I have to get rid of all my towels? The same reason why you have to get rid of all What's of that, your then? everything. Because you've got too much stuff, you can't live <laughs> properly. Remember? I was kind of agreeing to let these go, even though inside I didn't want to. And, and That's OK, you don't. And, and yet, and I don't know what to do. Astounded that I thought, oh, we could bring it all to this giant warehouse and spread it all out and display it all nicely. And Mum will be able to just go around and go, well, oh, just take that one and that one and that one, and the rest can go. I just feel really stupid. <laughs> 
that, that I could have even perceived that this would all be done. Over at Richard's house, progress is just as slow. In the last 10 days, we've bagged a vast amount of rubbish, and you can now see some of the stairs and floors. But Richard's still refusing to let anything be binned until he's gone through it. So what have you got there, then? This time last week. We found this. I set you a challenge. Would we get rid of a box of newspapers? Without looking at them. And I turned around and I said, well, no, I think I would rather actually glance and I make the decision. I want you to learn mm. what it feels like to let go without checking. Because the checking is what's got you here. Mm. Take that leap of faith. Try it. I really don't know. I don't know how my brain is ticking. Just don't. that bag? No. Simple as that. I can feel it coming. Come on. Come on, give us a yes. No, no, we're not no, looking no, no, at no, it. No, 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 no. Ask your mum with curiosity. I'm going to take one sample, one out in the middle of the bag. OK. Let's have a look at it. See, what, see what's of interest. Look, look at it. Oh, no, 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 look at the, the, the power of life or death caused oh. by excess newspapers. Go on. <gasps> you are such an angel, Morgan! <laughs> Well done, that's fantastic. <laughs> wow! I knew it. And actually, you know what, Richard? You won't even think about those you won't. ever again. You won't. You're that's a hero. That's a breakthrough. Well that's done. amazing. Well done. Right. Go, go on, on, superstar. Yay! Oh, go on. There it goes. Bye bye, history. Well done. Where's my lid? You should be really, really proud of yourself now. Oh. You've taken a big step. So how do you feel now after, after that first move that you've made? I feel invigorated because there's a lot of progress has been made. Do you know what makes me the happiest is the mm. fact that you enjoyed doing that mm. because you'll get that feeling again. Going through this experience has been very useful for me. It's quite revealing. It's good to know that there's a possibility that there can be help for me to sort out my life and my home, to get something done, whereas until now I felt there was little hope at all. There's still a really, really long way to go for Richard, but I think the last couple of weeks has been transformational inside him because he's been throwing stuff out. He's seen a psychologist and I hope that this house won't be the death of him. It's our final day in the warehouse and at last Mum's managed to push through the pain of having to decide what to keep and what to let go. That can go. And that goes with that. And that can go too. Mum's made quick decisions on hundreds of items. She's also let go of scores of boxes without even checking the contents. It's just unprecedented. And so it's great. It's absolutely just out of this world amazing. Maybe she's deciding you know what, time is more valuable, my space at home is more valuable, and it doesn't mean that much to me anyway, so just let it go. There's still some work to do, but my God, we've made a massive dent in all the stuff, so I couldn't ask for more, really.
I would never, ever have believed that Mum would get to that stage. Never. Goodbye. 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 I'm trying to be brave. I'm trying to be brave. I don't feel as if I've got rid of enough. But, um, you know, never give up hope. They're off. Say bye to your stuff, Mum. Stuff you. I've probably parted with about 50% of my belongings. Strangely enough, I don't miss the things that have gone. So it's quite odd. The problem is I'm still a hoarder. And in order to stay in control of it, I, I still need help. Most of what Mum's kept is upstairs, but the ground floor is clear enough for her to have the family round for dinner for the first time in eight years. It's hard to believe that this is the same house. Hello! <laughs> Hello, come in. It looks so great! Doesn't it? The White House. <laughs> <laughs> the future for this house will be more laughter and happiness, hopefully. That's what I'd like. It's really nice to have you all here. Oh, sure. And you've all worked so hard. Nice to really you. grateful. You're really lovely. Thank you. Oh, thank you for doing it, Mum. Well done. Sticking at it, yeah. Oh, oh cheers. 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 Bye, cheers. Oh. It's a nice feeling to feel like home really exists. That's really nice. That's the best part of this, actually. <laughs> thank you, Jasmine. Oh, thanks, Mama. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Richard has now employed someone to help him clear his house and plans to continue psychological treatment. Alan has allowed Marion and her friends to carry on working on their back garden. And I've learnt that hoarding is not a lost cause, but it does need to be recognised as a specific condition that people need help with. There is light at the end of the tunnel, even for some of the biggest hoarders.